Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course, and we are pleased to be joined by uh, one of the most well-known high school football coaches in the state of Michigan. That, of course, is Rob Zimmerman, the head football coach at DeWitt High School. Rob, thank you so much for joining us. Casey, you're very welcome. All right. So uh, I know you've been I know you've been at this for a while, but let's just kind of talk about how this summer has been going for you for you guys. Well, yeah, actually, you know, we've had a great summer. Uh, I'm very excited about this team. They've worked uh, extremely hard this whole offseason, all uh, all winter, spring, and and throughout the summer. And, you know, we traveled quite a bit with seven on seven and, and played in a lot of tournaments. And, uh, you know, I think we we did extremely well. And so got a lot of work to continue to do, but we're we're very optimistic about this fall. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that I know that um the past few seasons for DeWitt have gone have gone fairly well. And uh, obviously let's uh, let's kind of also talk about the, uh, I know there, there has been, there has been at least one staff change because we had him on a few weeks ago. Of course, I'm talking about Mike Holes, but um, uh, talk about um, any other staff changes besides uh, him. No, actually, um, you know, we're in good shape. We brought in Adam Nolan to replace Mike Holes, who's our head softball coach, used to be the defensive coordinator at East Lansing. Uh, he teaches it to win. He's been a great addition to our program. But other than that, uh, our entire staff is back. So, you know, we feel very fortunate uh, to continue with our continuity that we have. Well, what's it like, uh, you know, losing a guy like Mike? What does he kind of bring to it? What has he brought to the staff the past few years? Well, Mike certainly is very energetic, you know, and the kids really like him. I mean, he's fun to be around and great knowledge in the weight room. And, you know, he was certainly uh, – um, uh, a big part of our staff, but we are fortunate in, in getting a guy like Adam to come in with the background that he has also to replace Mike. So Mike was a big loss, but um, again, it's a, a great thing for us to be able to get Adam to take his spot. Of course, he is now the head football coach at Croswell Lexington. So um, kind of return home for him. But um, uh, let's talk about um, the guys that are going to be returning this year for uh, for you guys. And uh, and some of the names to watch out for the Panthers this year? Well, we were very, very young last year, and we actually are still really young. So we had uh, three sophomores that start, or excuse me, three freshmen that started for us last year on varsity, which we've never had. And so I'll start with those three all being back. So Trav Moore is a strong safety, and he plays both quarterback, uh, plays some quarterback and also a receiver for us. Uh, he's got an offer from Toledo already as a, as a sophomore. Um, Jaden Batters, a defensive back and receiver who has an offer from CMU. And then we have, um, oh, let's see, Jacob Scorfar, who's a tight end, defensive end for us. It started the entire season at tight end last year. He's a sophomore um, with a, a ton of RC experience. So those are our young guys that we're leaning on the most. Uh, we do have three other sophomores that are up on varsity as well. And then um, you know, with some of our, our more veteran kids uh, in the junior class, the twins, Elliot Larner, who's going to be our quarterback, and Abram, Abram Larner, uh, both started for us last year, those guys. And in our senior class, we're led by a couple linemen with um, Lincoln Stein, who's on his uh, third year as a varsity starter for us as our center and uh, JT Wellman is a second year starter up front at both uh, he's going to play guard and and rotate in the defensive line so you know we have a lot of uh, a lot of kids back we had a ton of starters back from last year but uh, again still a very young team yeah and of course uh, I know that um, you know uh, you know this year with uh, I know that there has been well, uh, I know there's been some new teams entering into the, the conference overall, but obviously the blue still remains the same. But uh, I, I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of schedules uh, for a lot of teams this year, as, as I've had a lot of coaches on. I've not seen this is uh, this is quite the schedule you have. I'm looking at it right now. Um, of course, I'll start off with uh, first game at home against Hazlitt and then uh, August 31st home against Mason, September 5th. Um, who, are, who are you guys playing on the 8th uh, week three there, Rob? We do not have a game week eighth. And hey, let me throw one more name at you too. Cerise Baker's a senior for us. That's a two-year starter running back also. I can't forget to include Reese with that. But uh, so we do not have a week three. Um, we start off with two very, what would be emotional games, certainly in tough tests with Hazlitt was a longtime rival forever. And 
you know, we, we played them a lot of sports and just got them back on the schedule last year. Mason is going to be one of, if not the biggest game in the state week two um, with the success that they've had. And then we do not have a week three. And then we play East Lansing week four, which will be, you know, obviously it is, that's our biggest rival now and a huge game in the conference. So uh, we do start off with certainly from a uh, mentally challenging standpoint, you know, emotionally, those three games are going to be very, very tough. And then obviously all three of those teams will be very good this year. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And of course that will be on the 15th when East Lansing comes to do it. And then I'll just run down the rest of the schedule. Uh, first road game of the year at Holt, uh, September 29th, home against Grand Ledge, October 6th at Okemos, October 13th at Lansing Everett, and then finishing out the season um, October 20th, uh, home against Lansing Waverly to finish out the regular season. So a pretty good schedule, only eight games. Of course, as you said, week three will be off for you guys, but um, I'm looking at those first three games and I'm I'm like, uh, and, and the advantages at home, That's that's got that's got to help. In some in some regard, but there are going to be those some pretty talented teams as always uh, up in the Lansing area. Yeah, no question. Those three games are going to be very very difficult for us, and we do consider that to be a huge plus that we have all three of them at home. We have, uh, as you know, a tremendous community, and our support at our games is outstanding. So our environment will be, um, you know, as good as it gets for those games, and certainly our support will be there. Will be very loud and. Our kids uh, are very, very confident at home. And so that's a huge plus for us for all three of those games. I know a lot of teams and from talking with a lot of coaches this week, uh, there a lot of teams are taking different approaches to what this week is. Um, well, how, well, how is DeWitt handling this week? Well, we have, uh, we do so much during the summer that we let the kids kind of have a break this week. We have weight room that's not, uh, obviously can't make it mandatory, but it's very much up to them, um, you know, as to whether they want to go in. We have three days of weight room, but otherwise our kids are completely off because our schedule in the summer is very, very extensive. And uh, a week ago, our kids put in just uh, an incredible amount of time between camp and, and finishing up all the workouts. So we give them this week to kind of recuperate. Okay, so I know that, of course, Monday and all the fun, the fun begins on uh, on August 7th uh, um, with the first practices. Uh, of course, what do you want to see out of this team before you guys head into uh, a pretty tough home schedule in those in those first three games? I think we just got to continue to get better, you know, which everybody says that. But uh, with camp last week, it went extremely well. And I feel like we've really progressed throughout the summer. So just keeping that focus and continuing to get better day by day. And that's, that's a cliche coach's cliche, but it's, it's so, so true. You know, you want to continue to see leadership grow, you know, we are young, so that's a, a big part of this, but it's got our leadership has continued to improve. And I feel very good about that. And I, I love our team's mindset. Um, I think these guys are hungry again, which, you know, when you have kids that are super competitive, they're willing to work, they love football, which, it's sometimes hard to find these days. So they want to put in whatever time that we ask them to put in. Uh, so, you know, we're heading in the right direction. We just got to continue to get better. I also, Casey, I, I love our numbers right now with uh, the way the world is. And, you know, we have, we have the most kids we've ever had playing football to it uh, right now in the high school. We have uh, pushing 120 kids, which for our size school is, is a ton. So we're very excited about the involvement in, in the community as well. Absolutely, Rob. Well, Rob Zimmerman, thank you so much for taking some time to talk with us and the best of luck to the Panthers this coming season. All right. Thank you, Casey. Appreciate you having me on.